everyone. Good evening and Selamat Hari Raya. It's Serene here, your host for People 4.0. Welcome to our SME Growth Series, organized by People 4.0, a community for SME that are passionate about IR 4.0 and business digitalization. Today is our third episode of SME Growth Series 2021. For those who are joining us for the first time, welcome and do say hi to us in the comment section below. If you are tuning in now, do share this live stream with your friends, colleagues, business partners, as well as your family members to learn more about business growth for SME. You will also get to join our People 4.0 SME community, a platform to network with other like-minded entrepreneurs, as well as to promote your products and services to grow each other business. Isn't it fantastic? So, this webinar is brought to you by Veeam, the global leader in backup solution for cloud data management. Veeam provides a single platform for modernizing backup, accelerating hybrid cloud, and securing data. Do stay until the end of the show. You can redeem 30-day free trial for the new V11 Veeam backup and replication. New V11. Eliminate data loss and ransomware with the new V11. Our supporting partners are New Horizons and Common Ground. People 4.0 as well is giving away free SME productivity training worth 500 ringgit. A link will be shared at the end of the show. So do stay tuned until the end to redeem this free training to have MDAC and also speaker from Beyond Infinity with us. I'm sure many of you are wondering what this is all about. So without further ado, let's get started. Enjoy the show. Thank you, Serene. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley. Welcome to the People 4.0 Growth Series. This is our third episode. In 2020, four out of five internet users in Malaysia have shopped online. So it is not a surprise that everyone rushing into the bandwagons of selling online. But what about the fact that e-commerce startup failure rate is at 90% after 120 days? So does e-commerce still sound promising to you? Ironically, we are still combating the pandemic and move on with the new norm. Shopping online for sure is the new norm which you and I are living in. So if e-commerce is what's best for us, how do we ensure we are doing it correctly? Tonight, we are going to look at this from different angles. First, let us welcome Mr. Izali. He is Head of E-commerce Adoption under Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. He has been involved in numerous public and private initiatives addressing the value chains of e-commerce. E Throughout his career, he has attempted to create powerful experiences for the local e-commerce ecosystem. So from the angles of policy maker, he is going to share how does the government create more room for up-and-coming e-commerce activities. On the other hand, we have Sam Khan from Beyond Infinity Consultancy. Sam is a certified trainer by Alibaba Business School and Taobao University. He and his team has been helping numbers of SME embark on e-commerce journey. With his hands-on experience, Sam is going to share with us the best practices which is essential for the success of e-commerce. Let, let, let us welcome both of them. Hi, Sam. Mr. Izali. Hello. Hi, hi. Hi, Ashley. Hey, thank you for your time, sir. It's really our pressure to, to have brought you here tonight. So let me let me ask you the first question, or perhaps it's a casual chat. So do you both like online shopping? 
how frequent that you actually do online shopping? Yeah, of course, uh, actually. So for me, anything that I can buy, buy, buy online, I will buy it online now, especially during the, the current <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> what about you, Sam? Uh, I shop every day. Uh, I browse through all the major e-commerce platforms uh, every single day uh, just for work. Uh, however, on a personal pleasure, I buy essential items. Okay, so for I, I myself, I actually did that every single day. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so um, we are in MCO 3.0, so our freedom to move around might be restricted, but e-commerce platform remain a happening place for both buyers and sellers. Just last month, our Prime Minister has approved MDA initiative National E-commerce Roadmap 2.0. How do you see this initiative is going to change the landscape of SME? Let's hear from Mr. Izali, who is a key person in charge of this initiative. Okay, uh, thank you, Ashley. So yes, uh, the national, uh, we call it National E-commerce Strategy Roadmap 2.0 has been up or NASR 2.0 has been approved or endorsed by by the highest level of the uh, Digital Economy Council, which is the National Council of Digital Economy and the fourth Industrial Revolution, uh, chaired by our Prime Minister in April 2021. So the NASR 2.0 will further enhance and accelerate our nation's e-commerce industry growth and also involve in, the, in terms of the innovation of the e-commerce technology from 2021 until 2025. For your information, uh, the idea of this national e-commerce strategy, strategy roadmap was mooted in year 2016 when we aim to double up the growth of e-commerce uh, in the country as well as to contribute in terms of the e-commerce to the GDP of the country. So we understand at that time in 2016, uh, we realized that e-commerce is the way to go uh, and e-commerce is the, is the gold rush for everybody. And uh, we understand also that a lot of government ministries, agencies have their own their own in initiative, uh, their own e-commerce initiative. And we understand also that e-commerce will be the future proof of our businesses. So based on that, we, we try to see how can government have this one single agenda for the country. And then the main idea when we develop this national e-commerce strategy roadmap is to bring all the ministries, all the agencies, all the association and, and in, including industry player in Malaysia to have a concerted effort yeah, because the effort from various ministry agencies to to have one single target for the national. So so we don't want our SMEs or businesses out there to confuse where they want to go, whether they want to go to this ministry or that ministry or this agency or that agency. So uh, with with the national e-commerce zero map, we we manage to bring everybody, uh, every ministry, every uh, agency under single agenda, and then we we formulate a program uh, to to for the growth of our e-commerce in, in Malaysia. And then since then, since the implementation of the National E-commerce Strategy Roadmap, Malaysia e-commerce market uh, has matured, I would say matured, and now we are just behind our neighboring country, which is Singapore. Yeah, And then we are among the, the top leaders in the uh, ASEAN Six Nation. So moving forward to continue the momentum, uh, we, we developed the NSR 2.0, and then MDEC together with the rest of the ministry agencies has involved, has engaged with various e-commerce ecosystem players, as well as MSMEs in various level of e-commerce experience, e-commerce level to obtain a balanced feedback. So we, we, we need to, to hear from the uh, really expert in the e-commerce and as well as the, the, the new, new newbies in the e-commerce. So based on that, we develop our NSR 2.0, which is guided by three objectives, namely number one, to intensify e-commerce adoption and growth. Uh, number two, to enhance the overall ecosystem of e-commerce and to develop the overall ecosystem of e-commerce to provide conducive environment to the Malaysian in the, uh, the country. And then number three, of course, we need to strengthen our policy and regulation uh, related to e-commerce to, 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 to further uh, build the trust for the for e-commerce the e environment. And then uh, this time around, we have four major targets because last in the NSR 1.0, we only target for the double to double the growth of, e of the e-commerce. But in this 2.0, we have four main targets, which is number one, to, to uh, expand our market size yeah, to uh, RM 1.5 trillion. Baseline uh, in the 2018 is around 400 million, 400 billion, sorry. Uh, and then we need to increase the every every revenue per user because because of currently our consumer they just uh, buy on on the on the uh, what we call that uh, not really high value item but we need to encourage them to to buy uh, uh, bigger bigger uh, value for item instance, for example uh, what is the high value mm. item high value item for example like now people start buying house online they start buying car online right 
So, but we only buy like small, small item like gadget and everything, but we need to build the trust so they can put a deposit, okay, they start buying the 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 big, big, big ticket like house or, or maybe, maybe uh, uh, cars or, 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 or uh, big, big ticket item, yeah. And then uh, the, the third target will be the e-commerce adoption because uh, we understand in order for us to grow the overall e-commerce industry, we need to have more and more sellers. Yeah, more and more sellers to start selling online because no option now. So everybody need to move to e-commerce. And then the fourth one, of course, uh, not just to penetrate our local or domestic market, we also need to encourage for the export. So hence, that's why we need to, to get our sellers, to get our SMEs to start onboarding into the various international marketplace to start penetrate not just ASEAN country, maybe to the global market. So to achieve this target, we work, we, we will work with the multiple stakeholders across from the public and public sectors uh, to draft the advancement of the e-commerce industry. So there, there are six strategic trusts that have been identified under this national e-commerce strategy roadmap. Number one, of course, we, the effective usage of the e-commerce adoption. We don't want our MSMEs or our business to just onboard. They need to really capitalize. They need to really uh, 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 use the potential or full potential of this e-commerce to make sure their business survive, to make sure they are still operate, to make sure they penetrate at the paper market. Yeah, and then we also need to continue to encourage our SMEs to tap into the global global e-commerce. And then number two, we talk about how can we capitalize the export potential because we understand in Malaysia we have a lot of unique product. For example, like we have a durian, we have batik, we have bird nest, we have so many product that, but but. When, when we talk about e-commerce, people people don't know. Okay, when we talk about Malaysia, what are the products that really people people can relate to Malaysia? Is it batik? Can, are we competing batik with batik Indonesia? There are so it, much, example, you know, in Zay Azari. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. so much of Malaysia unique products that we, can, we can't wait to show to yeah. the world. So yeah. perhaps e-commerce is really a, a very good platform. Yeah. Good, uh, correct. So because this is the thing that we work closely with Madrid, Madrid will give us the uh, so-called insight what are the suitable product for certain market because not all product can, can can be suitable to certain market, right? For example, in China, maybe different product, in maybe, maybe Middle East, different product, and maybe US, different product. This is where we need to really understand what are the culture, what are the customer behavior, what are the, what are the, uh, uh, what do, do those other country wants from our country, yeah? So number, number uh, the third trust area will be we need to strengthen our e-commerce fulfillment cap capabilities. This is where to cater the new expectation of this e-commerce. Last time people can wait two three days, right, before the product can be can be uh, arrived at their doorstep. But now people expect same day delivery. People expect a next day delivery with a proper tracking. Like for example, now people people cannot wait, right? They want to see, eh, hey, where are, where is my product now? Where, where are the stage of my product? They need to see the, the product moving from the maybe from the seller's uh, shop into their, their, their doorstep. So we need to have that uh, good uh, SLA or, or good SOP with our uh, fulfillment and logistic provider to, to have like really efficient in terms of the delivery of goods. Yeah. Number four, we talk about the how can we spearhead e-commerce innovation. This is quite important because we understand most of the technology come from overseas. So how can we develop, our, can we have our own local champion, our own local technology to further grow our e-commerce. And number five, we talk about the power of data. So I, I believe everybody knows that data is the new oil right now. Data can help us to make a, a, a decision, decision making process and to understand the whole scenario of this e-commerce. And for the government, data is very important for us to see the pulse of our economy. Yeah, and to see the pattern in terms of the consumer behavior, in terms of the country, in terms of our competitors and everything. So data is, is the main focus right now. And then the, the last but not least is uh, to improve our seller and uh, buyer protection. So we always heard about the uh, about the buyer being cheated. Uh, we also need to know that sometimes seller also been cheated. That's yeah? always happened, right? It's getting yeah. more and more seller frequent. Also, yeah. Uh, seller also 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 uh, get, got scammed from the from the buyers. Yeah. So now we, we try to balance both two between buyers and sellers. So how can we protect this to provide a conducive environment to provide trusted trusted environment for Malaysian to to start uh, to start buying or to start uh, uh, trust in terms of the online transaction and back to your question actually yeah yeah I, I agree this NSR 2.0 we will not just uh, uh, change the landscape of our MSMEs to do their business but uh, we need to also uh, prepare them uh, pre prepare our MSMEs to to have a future business proof and of course we need to build the, the conducive environment for the country. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Izali. Uh, sounds like Malaysia is doing quite okay. It's on track in pursuing the e-commerce uh, activities. Uh, you know, So that's great. That's great to hear that. Uh, what about you, Sam? What do you think this initiative is going to benefit the SME? Um, I think in my humble opinion, I don't think the NESR 2.0 is going to change the landscape of SME. Yeah. In fact, what it will do, it will accelerate. Well, this is due to the fact that the focus and objective to increase e-commerce adoption have not changed since the first roadmap. However, what I want to highlight is, as mentioned as Inche Izali also, is the increasing of the revenue of e-commerce export from current to 9,500 for average revenue per user. Now, at this point, uh, in order to achieve this, I think the focus is not just mere adoption. Okay, I think what it requires is also not just onboarding 27,000 sellers to just 84,000 to e-commerce export adoption. At this stage, mere adoption will only bring down the average revenue per user if the seller does not perform. So with more than 10 years of experience uh, within the e-commerce industry and having trained thousands of sellers from Southeast Asia and Europe, I will point out that this requires not just setting up a store, it requires competitive listing, it requires execute sales strategy, and it requires market research. So what these sellers need is a blueprint. And in our private consulting, we spend a minimum of at least a whole day with experienced sellers just to develop their annual plan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sam, for sharing on this. It uh, looks like you and uh, Mr. Izali has a slightly different uh, thought uh, on this. Um, well, it doesn't mean that if anyone who wish to start up a business now should forget about the brick and mortar, instead begin with online platforms such as selling and marketplace. So Sam, what would be the prerequisite on this? Um, I'm always being asked by this question. Um, I think this is not an either or situation. So meaning okay. you want offline means there's no online or you want online means there's no offline. I think for those audience today here, for you to start business, I will always guide people to ask themselves these three important questions. Yeah. The first one is, what are the products and services you are offering? Always know what you are selling first, because this will determine second question. Where is the traffic or the bulk of your customers looking for your products and services? So let's take it to the current pandemic situation. Your potential customer purchase behavior may be shifted. So always relate with the current situation. And this will lead to the final third question. What is your allocation of resources? Now, if you have limited time and money, I will advise you to research the suitable platform for your business that has traffic and has high potential to yield results. Now, for example, if you were to set up a shop uh, offline, you, you will not want to pick you know, some kaki lima hidden somewhere and there's no food traffic, there's no visibility, no one will ever know about your shop. They won't be able to discover about you. So I think these are very three important guiding questions. So of course, moving past this stage, everyone knows the term, time is money. So just like our clients comprising of brands and SMEs, uh, they also didn't want to waste time or either resources to keep figuring out. So they prefer a helping hand with experience. And that's where we come in to help them fasten their learning process to generating results. So some clients prefer to pick up the phone, give us a call, share their problem, and we resolve immediately. Alternatively, some prefer a clinic session where I spend time to analyze, provide advice and actionable points for them to improvement in a structured report. So remember the three important questions that you should always ask yourself whenever you start business. Hope this helps to our audiences tonight. Yeah, thank you, Sam. So Sam, you did point at something very important. So e-commerce is not just about putting up your products or services on marketplace or set up a website. It is about your ability to create a great user experience. So to create great user experience that depends on lots of factors. Uh, what will be the important factors which SME cannot afford to miss it? Uh, Mr. Izali, I'm sure you have a lot of insight to share about this. Yes, uh, actually. So, okay, thanks for your question. Uh, you're correct. The e-commerce is not just merely about the selling a product, putting a product online, and then let the people buy a product. But you need to understand the whole value chain and the buying journey process from the angle of marketing, from the angle of the buying behavior, from the angle of buying pattern for the consumer, as well as to provide the high level of user experience. And the most important thing is the satisfaction. 
Previously, when people sell via physical shop, the consumer can see the location. They can see how you arrange your product. Okay, you can touch your product. They can talk to your salesperson. They can they can uh, uh, ask your salesperson, and they can see reaction of your salesperson. And then they they also can uh, can can uh, talk to the the other consumer. But uh, moving towards the e-commerce, everything's based on the on the on the screen. Yeah, on the screen. Now people use mobile screen. It's limited screen size where they they or you can see your 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 shop within that that limited size of of screen, right? So they rely on their 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 screen. They browse your product from their screen. They read your product description. They look at your photos. They look at your visual. They they read feedback from the user. They read feedback from the from the uh, from the customer and everything. So they just rely on information that that they can see from their mobile phone. So. How can we improve uh, the the overall uh, uh, buying journey of this uh, uh, consumer? So you you the, you you need to understand the 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 pattern in terms of their their the experience that they're going to to go through. For example, like like I mentioned just now, when you talk about your product, what is really unique selling proposition of your product? How can you differentiate your product with other uh, with other uh, sellers? Yeah. For example, like if you participate in the certain marketplaces, right? So maybe you you sell a similar product with other sellers, but how can you stand out? How can you really 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 make sure that people really want to buy your product? What makes your product really stand? out in terms of your really unique selling proposition in terms of your visual yeah you cannot just rely on the low quality of photos or low quality of visual of your your product and services and then uh, in terms of the project product description so you need to 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 have very concise and very easy for people to understand and really relate to their what they want what their interest and what their their their, their uh, habit or behaviors so this is something that you really need to understand that put your customer first put your your user first how do you you want them to really comfortable uh, to buy from your your e-commerce site so based based on this i think i think uh, uh, you need uh, you need to understand in terms of the number one how to uh, how to push your product via the e-commerce marketplace and the second step would be the this this thing which is what are the payment mechanism what are the comfortable or the trusted payment that your consumer really want to to able to transact which which uh, payment provider or which uh, payment platform that really they trust in order for them to do a transaction and then the third part is uh, uh, will be the the logistic and fulfillment so we heard a lot of product when it comes uh, come into the doorstep and sometimes the the product koyak lah the, the 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 product always damage and everything so you need to understand how 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 to make sure that your product really uh, arrive at the consumer with the, with a good condition and then they, when they open their product you have this uh, appreciation thank you card or whatsoever so this is all the buying journey that you need to develop in order for you to keep the the, the buyer loyal to you once they are loyal to your shop or to, loyal to your product they will continue buying from your product from your shop yeah Oh, oh, thank you, Mr. Izali, for sharing with us so much of tips. Uh, I, I do agree with you. It's about the consumer journey. How do you make yourself different, different um, in a whole consumer journey than other sellers? So, Sam, what about your experience going to tell us? Well, I think this is a very good question, yeah? And I would like to refer this uh, question to the fundamental four P's of marketing that holds true today, yeah? Product, price, place, and promotion. Now, e-commerce has provided choice for our consumers to compare and select. Now, as much as it is a channel with lots of advantage, it also comes with high competitiveness. So businesses are now able to reach customers without borders, but so are their competitors too. So what can you make yourself stand out is the fifth P. And I would like to introduce this fifth P to everyone and that's called personalization. So allow me to give all of you a very simple example. So today, it's not just about Inche Izali and myself in the hot seat, yeah? So I'd like to direct the next question to our moderator, Ashley. Ashley, where do you do your grocery shopping? Uh, I used to go to uh, Jago's supermarket. Okay, very well. So say example, yeah? Today, you need to buy instant noodles and onions, okay? Um, and say, for example, if there's a Pasar Mini near you, Let's just call that Pasar Mini Samcon. Okay, I, I own the Pasar Mini. Okay, now even imagine this: everything is piled at everywhere. Yeah, it is messy. Your item is definitely somewhere, but you just don't know where. Is it frustrating? 
Uh, it is. It is. Okay. Now, yeah. now let's go to your choice of supermarket. Yeah, for for in this in this particular session, Jaya Grocer. Now the aisles are easy to browse. Okay, they are very clearly labeled with instant noodle section. They are very clearly labeled with fresh vegetable section. Now in and out, super easy. Now this is what we call personalizing to the user. Yeah, creating a good user experience. Now apply this online. It is the same. How do you help your customers to find what they want? Because if you don't, very easily, a customer like Ashley, yeah, she would easily just click a button from Pasa Mini Samcon to somewhere else with just a click of a button. So e-commerce made it that easy. Now, what I just share is just a very basic of personalization. Now, of course, with accessibility of data and proper guidance, personalization can even reach to a level of product creation to suit the current market fit. So I hope this answers the question. Thank you, Sam. So if I may conclude, uh, do a small conclusion here. Competition rules apply the same, but now we switch, another, switch to another battle, which is online platform. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you uh, uh, the same questions from another angle. You know. How do you see having the right people with rescue play an important role in ensuring the success of e-commerce? Let us hear from Mr. Yizali. Okay, thank you, Ashley. Uh, basically, in order for you to handle the e-commerce business, it actually is totally different yeah, from the normal brick and mortar shop. Yeah, I, I, I would like to relate back what uh, Sam mentioned just now. The most important thing is we need to understand the process involved in terms of the, the business process via the e-commerce that we require specific or the right skill set yeah, to optimize the result uh, in the future. So number one, you talk about marketing. So first thing first, I agree with Sam, this is a personalized marketing. Yeah, you need to have specific marketing because in, in, in terms of e-commerce, in terms of uh, digital, we call it digital footprint for our consumer, easy for us to track, uh, easy for us to understand, is, and easy for us to really customize what are the interests, what are the product that really specific to that, to that particular customer. So we even, we can go into the individual customer. So the most important thing is to understand in terms of the marketing, how can we market your product to the right consumer and, and the specific what they want, what they, are their interests. So number two, in terms of the managing the virtual shop, so it must be a simple, easy to understand, clear product description, clear product photography, attract people to, to browse your, your, your product, use the, your consumer language, and then try to push your unique selling proposition. The third one, the photo, like I mentioned just now, uh, clear, must be clear visual, high quality photo, not just a simply you upload your, your, your scan photo. And then the, the photo must be in terms of the good product angle. Yeah? So, and then number four, we talk about how can you integrate, how can you, you use the right payment technology, the right logistic, the right fulfillment. This is where you need to choose the right partner or right, right service provider that can help you to grow your business. And then uh, when you want to deliver your product, you, you must ha have good packaging. You must have um, a, a good, good uh, 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 box that can send to the, to the consumer with a bubble wrap to ensure that product is really good in the condition. So all these things, require a right skill set not just everybody can can do anything from the marketing to the shop management to the managing of the technology and of course last but not least is how can you handle the consumer consumer relation is very important again relate back to the personalization how can you have personal touch with your client how can you have uh, appreciate your client how can you ensure that they give a good feedback to you or how can you handle handle the, the, their complaint because you cannot because one one bad review or complaint about your product it can can make, make it can it can damage your 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 shop or, or your your products yeah the, once your your product go viral with a bad reputation i think you are gone right this is something yes, that yes. We, we require the, the right skill set the right uh, the right people to manage all these things and and at, at the same time uh, of course we're talking about the loyalty for your shop lah. yeah Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Izali. And Sam, you and your team has been managing e-commerce businesses for many clients. I'm sure you have your different thoughts on this. Um, I think in relation to this question, um, I think right people and right skills certainly plays an important role. Um, however, there are also many people with e-commerce skills and that doesn't determine their success though. I think experience matters. Uh, it is very important to understand the current landscape of e-commerce identifying what caters to customers and how to actually position your business in this competitive environment. So in our consultancy, we actually download all these experiences to our learners so they have a stronger foundation to execute, able to make logical decisions and significantly reducing stepping into e-commerce potholes that cost money. Yeah, I believe technical skills can be taught, but experience needs to be shared. 
So I, to me, I think experience also matters uh, much importantly. Hey Sam, uh, allow me to interrupt for a while. Uh, there was this question posted by one of the fans. Uh, so he's actually asking, uh, is Mr. Ong. So he's asking, how crucial is marketing for e-commerce? Or should we just focus on listing optimization? Hmm. So is this question directed to me? Hey, Mr. Izali or Sam, um, <laughs> do you think that any one of you can actually give a, you know, really a satisfied answer to our fans? I think let, let's answer this question. Okay, thank you. Um, I think more importantly is you need to ask yourself, what does your business need? In every business, there's many steps you need to take. Again, come back to our question just now. When you start your business, first is what product and services are you selling? Second is what, where is your traffic right now? And the third one is allocation of resources. Now, if at this stage, you have allocated resources for marketing, I say go ahead. Optimization is an operational process. It's an ongoing process and it's an ever-changing process. But do you need to do it on a daily basis? Not necessarily. So you have to figure out and balance a bit which one takes priority. Yeah, and yeah. come back to your allocation of resources. Yeah, uh, can I add on, on that angle, Ashley? So for me, uh, when you talk about e-commerce, we are talking about uh, the right product to the right uh, consumer with the right platform. Means that this is important for you to do marketing in term of the in term of the how can you reach out, how can you you personalize your your product and services? Because uh, when we look at the the e-commerce, uh, even even in in one one one, I, I would I would give example in this uh, forum. So there are so many people with different different interests, right? With different different uh, 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 preferences and everything. So via e-commerce, actually we need, need to understand your customer, and then you need to really understand what are their interests, and then this is where marketing coming in. So in, in terms of the digital marketing, is easy for us to identify. You can market to the certain certain group. You can market the certain age. You can market the certain uh, demographic and everything. That way you can customize. So I believe the the marketing is the first step for you to to go into e-commerce. And I believe e-commerce is we are talking about the marketing rather than selling. Thank you, thank you for both. Uh, Mr. Ong, I hope that you got the answer that you want. Uh, don't worry. Uh, if you have further questions, just leave a comment uh, for us. Uh, we will address to that uh, later. Uh, so, um, the next questions that we're going to ask uh, to guest speaker, uh, what is the greatest challenge you foresee SMEs going to face if they wish to embark on e-commerce, especially in the post-pandemic period? Mr. Izali? Okay. I think with the current pandemic and this challenging business environment, in order for the MSMEs or business to survive, whether they like it or not, they need to, to uh, the MSA have been pushed to accelerate their digitalization and e-commerce adoption. So we can see that e-commerce is the, as an avenue that can help MOSMEs to, to continue to operate their business. So in many studies conducted by MDEC and other government agencies, there are three major factors, lah, three major challenges that uh, SME face when they want to embark into digitalization or e-commerce. Number one, we talk about the knowledge of the certain technology of the, the current environment, current situation. Number two, we're talking about the current skill set. What are the skill set required? What are the knowledge, uh, skill set that they, they need to obtain uh, in order for them to grow their business? And the, the material, of course, we talk about the funding or the perception in terms of the cost of adoption digitalization. Number three, normally government will play the, the role to help the, the industry in, in order for them to adopt the e-commerce. But for me, uh, they are new, uh, I can divide the challenges into two major categories. Number one, internal challenges. And number two, in terms of external challenges. Internal ch challenges, we talk about the mindset itself. You know, whether they, 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 they want to really adopt e-commerce, uh, what, what is their, their, their understanding and then the opportunity of this e-commerce, they do need to have the right mindset. And then they need to, to think big. This e-commerce not just to reach out to your your current uh, business area, but also can reach out to the whole country and then, and then the whole world. So and then number two, of course, we need to prepare the right knowledge or the right skill set within the e-commerce value chain from the buying journey uh, to, uh, to improve uh, customer buying experience into the out, how can we outsource our certain certain uh, uh, what we call it services to to e-payment for example or logistic and then what are the strategic partnership that we can do with, with the e-commerce ecosystem. 
And then when we talk about the external challenges, of course, we are we are talking about to understand, uh, back to understanding of the consumer behavior, consumer buying pattern, uh, understand their footprint, uh, do customization, make sure we engage with these people, make sure they're comfortable with your shop, make sure they're comfortable to to continue buying to your shop. Number two, we talk about the you must use use the right channel to you to outreach to your consumer, right? For example, uh, I would say that in order for you to participate or to open your shop in multiple marketplaces, the the cost of the adoption is really I would say I would say it, it can be zero cost, but you must put effort to be visible at multiple marketplaces, and then from there, don't just participate into one marketplace. You you need to. To, to to try to so, uh, as, as many channels as you can and then from there you can see which are the channel or which are the marketplace that can give you better benefit for your business and then from there you can decide so uh, you can continue with the particular marketplaces you continue uh, to 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 sell a product via the particular marketplaces or you can develop on, on your uh, develop your own website but all these uh, participating in marketplaces or develop your own website have different set of challenges so this one you need to weigh in terms of your business uh, cost in terms of your skill set and, and and your knowledge and then back to back to number one just now uh, we talk about the personalization marketing and promotion to direct consumer and then um, we also need to address with the current or latest technology so because of now for example people really uh, people don't want uh, direct direct marketing you said about this product and this is the product or well, maybe you you have you need to develop also for example like short video short marketing gimmick right for them to because now people are not just buying product because they want to buy product they want they need to see the noble intention the story behind the product creation especially product like craft and everything then to see what are the reason you develop the particular product and then they can support you so because of this i think the all this combination uh, uh you, you you the 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 msmes or the businesses need to understand uh the 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 whole ecosystem the whole scenario in order for them to 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 get the right the right uh, product to the right customer. Yes, we get you. Um, so before we go to Sam, um, Mr. Izali, there was this mm. question addressed to you. Um, mm. Hope that you won't. Oh, this question won't put you on hot seat. Uh, it's more relevant uh, 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 related to internet challenge of SME. Uh, Mr. Okay. Ko Kim Ming um, is uh. saying, NDEC automation grants to service sector have been closed. And mm -hmm. we hope that and that going okay. to announce for our next batch soon. I think mm -hmm. financing is always the biggest challenge that faced by SME. Right? Um, what do you say about this? Okay, uh, I talk about SDG grant. Uh, yes, uh, we understand that uh, all this grant will help the SMEs in terms of the digitalization. But SDG grant uh, mainly focus on the. Uh, they, they have two focus. Yeah, number one, we talk about the upfront uh, up, uh, up front. Uh, we talk about the front end uh, application and then second about the back end application the SDG can cover both but for e-commerce we, we mainly talk about the 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 front end where where this way you can sell your product you can put your product out there to the to the to the what we call that to the consumer out there and then uh, just I think I, I want to talk about this because uh, if you heard about the penjana initiative last year, Yes, yes. Where the government allocated 70 million yeah, in order for us to to help the industry to go on board and to promote the the e-commerce selling, and then the the industry also put another 70 billion. The total the total uh, fund for that particular initiative last year is around 140 million, where we help the the uh, SMEs. I will give the statistic later. They help the SMEs uh, to to start uh, their e-commerce journey as well as to 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 help the consumer to buy from the local seller. So, so the initiative quite successful, and then uh, this year, uh, based on the budget 2021 that have been announced by our Prime Minister, uh, the government uh, will continue the similar initiative. Now they put additional amount where where the government put around 200 million of uh, funding to the MSMEs, and then the the uh, technology providers or the enablers or the platform providers will match that funding. So it means the total is more more than 300 million to 200 million that can be benefit to the MSMEs. I think I, I will explain that later. Okay, thank you, thank you. Sam, um, what do you think? What is the greatest challenge um, you foresee SMEs is going to face? So e-commerce is a very fast pace. Yeah, it's ever-changing. 
And in this ever-changing landscape, I think it is not the big fish that's eating the small fish. It is rather the fast fish, you know, eating the slow fish. So one important key point to thrive in e-commerce is not to dwell too long being perfect, but rather execute first and make improvements along the way. So I have came across, you know, many SMEs who came and asked me, you know, Sam, what is the best platform? What's the best way? What's the best method? What's the best campaign? Yeah, the truth is there's no best approach and it will only be worse if you don't take action at all. So, you know, be quick, take action, improvise and change along the way. But most importantly, take action first. And I also would like to give this advice to our Mr. Ong just now, you know, instead of thinking which is which first, why don't you just take the leap of faith first and do it? Thank you, Sen. Thank you, Sen. So 40% of e-commerce, this is something that I found out earlier. <clears throat> 40% of e-commerce purchase is cross-bordering. So the number of e-purchase large percentage went to overseas. And a lot of SME Malaysia are selling make in Malaysia. So if this phenomena is going to persist, right, I'm afraid in long run, it is going to put Malaysia SME in disadvantage. Shall the policymaker impose a 60-40 rules, like 60% of marketplace must be Malaysia seller, and is this feasible coming from the point of protecting our local SME? Okay, actually, um, I would like to answer this uh, based on the uh, government. I understand, we need to understand that e-commerce will provide opportunity and level playing field for the business to compete, not just to the, to the domestic environment, but also to the global sellers. So, of course, government need to protect, government try to 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 help our SMEs to start to grow their business not just within the domestic market but also to the to the overseas the the currently government has introduced implementing many initiative yeah, to encourage MSME to go on board and start selling their product even even in the national e-commerce roadmap 1.0 and 2.0 we work with various ministries agencies public sector private sector industry players uh, e marketplaces to boost the e-commerce adoption uh, and as well as to provide the, the right or, or the best environment for the industry to grow. Yeah. So, however, in order for us to, to stimulate the, the growth of the overall ecosystem, there need to be a balance yeah, between the industry development and then policy development. If you put, uh, in, in my opinion, if you put too many restrictions, too many, too many regulation to the to the, uh, uh, for example, in marketplace or the foreign player to want to come to Malaysia, so we afraid that they will go to other country. And then end up we will lose uh, uh, the market, right? So hence the, this where I, uh, the the best now is to just to stimulate the growth, make sure our our MSME also can can compete with the with the the other other sellers because we can't stop from other seller from uh, or, or, or our consumer to buy from other marketplace. Even we, we said for example, yeah, the, the the consumer can buy direct from Amazon.com. What 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 can we do, right? Uh, but our role is to make sure that our MSME also will be visible to be visible into the online marketplaces. Make sure we push their product. Make sure we 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 try to promote our our Malaysian, Malaysian seller. We try to promote our Malaysian product. We try to position uh, the 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 best product from Malaysia. We try to to create what are the unique product that you can buy from Malaysia. So we can can, can give benefit to the to the uh, Malaysian seller as well as the Malaysian economy. So like, like I mentioned uh, previously, so we have initiative, yeah, Penjana last year. So where this initiative, they have two initiative in Penjana last year. Number one, to go to bring our MSP to go on board into multiple marketplaces, multiple marketplaces. And number two, to encourage our, our consumer to buy uh, Malaysian product or from Malaysian seller. This is why we incentivize them with a voucher, with a discount code, with a free shipping and everything. So uh, based on the implementation of the Penjana, we managed to bring more than 33,000 within June and September. We work with the marketplaces. We managed to bring 33,000 of new SMEs to register their business via multiple market marketplaces. And then we benefited, mm, we benefited 202,000 MSMEs, local MSMEs to, to incentivize our consumer to buy from these people. And then the total transaction via the e-commerce from that period June to September is around 1.87 billion transacted with our MSMEs. This is the thing that government help in terms of the, the stimulate the growth of the or, or sim, the, to, to make sure that our MSMEs, our business still survive. They have they have a lot of other other initiative that, that we try to come out even in, in the uh, NASR 2.0, we, we identify how can we start penetrate at the country market. Don't just limit our ourselves to the local market. Start to push our market because sometimes for example, eh, 
we had a program uh, last year together with Alibaba, together with 60, uh, we call it global marketplaces. We try to push certain product to certain market. So uh, the, 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 the main issue, not because of we cannot bring these people, but sometimes the main issue is the capabilities, capability and capacity of our SMEs. Sometimes when they go out there, they don't have enough capacity to produce that particular orders. Right? Maybe their capacity of only 1,000 or uh, 1,000 order per month, but the world require 1,000 1, 1 million orders. This is another another good problem for me. Good problem to have. But we, but this is the, the thing that we need to look and in terms in term of the, the 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 overall ecosystem from the product development into the selling and into the handler customer services and to handle the global demand. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Izani. What about you, Sam? Um, I think for cross-border, yeah, uh, I think there are many factors that can actually affect uh, cross-border purchase. Uh, for example, uh, product availability, uh, pricing competitiveness, product quality, and of course, uh, much more. Now, if there is an impose of this policy, yeah, which is 60% Malaysian and 40% international for local marketplace, um, just to protect local SME, I think this can only be a short-term solution. However, in the long term, this can bring adverse effects such as being a blocker for attracting foreign investment. Yeah. So here's my message to all the SMEs who are listening to this. Time to wake up. Okay. You are the master of your business and it's up to you to make the improvements. So instead of just waiting for policies to be in place, and of course, our government have many good initiatives to boost. Make sure that you also seize the opportunity to make full use of the data to further identify the what's and the how. What is the local demand? How to make them available to our local consumers and how to demonstrate its value so more people will actually buy. So make sure to take charge of your business. Thank you, thank you for sharing and thanks for the wake up call, Sam. So, and the metaphor of fast fish eating the small fish or big fish that mentioned by just now is actually the best way to describe the ecosystem of current e-commerce uh, world. So thanks for sharing. Um, here comes to the end of the show. Um, E-commerce is not as simple as putting our product and services online. It is not a remedy for poor sales performance, but it will catapult your business if you do it correctly. If you want to pursue e-commerce because you know that is where you can get your customer. But how do you reach up to them? That requires some strategic thinking behind the scene. If you wish to have further guidance on this, Please don't hesitate to contact us. We will bring you the right subject matter expert to you. Stay tuned for our next episode. We are going to bring you more insights of how you get the most from embracing the digital transformation as an SME. Don't go anywhere. I will pass the floor to our host, Serene, to share on you how you're going to redeem the complimentary giveaway from People 4.0. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. It was an informative session indeed. I'm sure that our audience tonight learned a lot. Now, our webinar sponsor, Wim, is giving away a 30-day free trial for the new V11 Wim backup and replication. New V11 eliminate data loss and ransomware with the new V11. Now you can click on the link below at the comment section to redeem your new V11 30 days free trial. And also, today we have another special giveaway from our speaker, Sam, from Beyond Infinity. Scan this QR code here and receive exclusive ebook and voucher. We will share this QR code also on the chat box as well. Okay, once again, come and join our People 4.0 community to enjoy the community benefits and get featured as SME of the month. You'll be entitled to exclusive benefits such as IR 4.0 specialization courses, virtual and physical networking opportunities, tips on digitalizing your business, and much more. Now, there should be a link in the comment section where you can redeem your SME productivity training worth 500 ringgit. Go and click on it and sign up now. Also, do head over to our website and sign up for our special virtual event. SME Connect in June. This is a special networking event 
organized for SME leaders where we can network virtually and also learn from the experts on IR 4.0. That concludes today's episode. If you have learned something from the webinar, do like us on People 4.0 and from the Facebook page and Instagram, as well as share this video with your friends. Thank you once again for watching this. Thank you once again for our sponsor Vim and our partners, New Horizon and Common Ground. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode. Selamat Hari Raya. Good night.